My name is Bruce Gao. I'm a third year undergraduate student at the University of Calgary, and I'm an innovator and neuroscientist. I like mountain climbing, origami, technology, and thinking of big ideas that can change the world. From a young age, science was something that always fascinated me. I remember being extremely interested in a biology picture book I owned. And although the rainforests and marine ecosystems were interesting, I was always drawn to the human section. It had small pull-out tabs, colorful pictures, and wonderful descriptions of the human body. And I was amazed at how all of these individuals' components work together to create something as complex as the human body. And this was the first time I thought about medicine, being a healer of the human body, and using my understanding of these beautiful diagrams to help other peoples. And to this day, challenges and questions still get me really, really excited. Well, I'm the type of person who can never let go of a problem. I realized that the best types of problems are the ones that give me the chance to help other people. When I was in high school, I volunteered in an orphanage in rural China, and it was during the monsoon season, so it was really cold. The orphans were actually sleeping together to conserve body warmth, and me, living in my nice and warm hotel, really made me think about the disparity between my living conditions and theirs. I realized that their solar panels weren't being aligned properly and they weren't getting enough of the heat that they needed. They had the technology to have a better quality of life, but they weren't using it properly. Upon returning to Canada, I couldn't let go of what I had realized. I wondered how many other people around the world must have the exact same problem. And at first, I was discouraged because I was of such a young age. I was only in high school and I thought to myself, what could I do? And after meeting my friend Matt Pridman, we decided that perhaps a mobile app was the best way for us to share the information about proper solar alignment. And the only problem was, none of us knew how to make a mobile app, and we had to teach ourselves. So we coded for five hours and we ended up with more bugs than we started with, but we pushed onwards and we sought technical advice from programmers and professors. And in the end, we came up with Simply Solar which is a mobile app that allows people to use their mobile phones to align solar panels in developing countries. And this improves them by up to 40%. In collaboration with the United Nations to distribute our software, Simply Solar is now being used in over 130 countries around the world. After releasing Simply Solar, I got the chance to present it at the International Student Energy Summit in Trondheim, Norway. And this conference gathers people from around the world to talk about sustainability, and it was absolutely nerve-wracking and humbling to be the youngest speaker. In fact, there are people from over 50 countries over there, and everybody had their PhDs and masters while I was just there with my iPhone showing them how to align a solar panel. And it really got to me to think that Perhaps in the end, age is not a barrier, it's just a number, and perhaps it could actually be used to my advantage. In addition to Simply Solar, I plan to continue helping other people by applying what I learn in school and what I research in my spare time. I learned from my professor, Dr. Wilson, that there is a genetic disease called Rohat, and Rohat is a really nasty disease. People who have it usually die of a cardiac arrest during their teenage years. And here at the Alberta Children's Hospital, we actually have a few kids with Rohat. I brought it upon myself to figure out a way to identify the gene that was defected in Rohat. I created a program that could search this online biomedical database called PubMed, and it would take in all of their genes and search it with the symptoms that they were presenting with. In the end, I was able to publish my program online with the help of Matt Fridman, and it's called Biogram. Researchers can come onto this website and do their own gene searches, and this will help personalize medicine and figure out exactly what gene is causing a genetic disease. Another idea that I've been working on is called Cogni. And through my courses, I realized that since ancient times, people have been drinking green tea to improve their focus. And I thought to myself, what's responsible for these concentration-inducing properties? And so I did some research, and there are two psychoactive substances in green tea. As if I noticed something very interesting. I noticed that in all of the studies done on these two substances, the ratio that they used was actually opposite to what was actually found naturally in green tea. And so what Cogni aims to do is to reinvent green tea. So 
so it fixes the ratio of these two substances and so when you drink green tea not only will you feel soothed not only will it be an enjoyable experience but you will also be able to focus better afterwards and this is a great alternative to a lot of the dangerous smart drugs out today such as Ritalin, Adderall. Cogni is like coffee except without the jitters and without the frustrating crash at the end. This summer, I've been blessed with the opportunity to head to Oxford University to work with a professor to figure out how to improve recovery after a stroke. We're using this technology called Functional Magnetic Resonance Imaging, and we'll be able to see what parts of the brain activate when you do a certain task. And the really neat thing is, is that Oxford has the most powerful machine in the world. It's such a privilege to work with such amazing people from a diverse interdisciplinary background. And to be able to contribute to this is really something that I find very rewarding. If you're passionate about doing something, passionate about making a change, do it while you're young. Don't wait to start on your ideas. A friend of mine once said, you don't have to see the entire staircase to take the first step. You don't need a master plan. All you need is the confidence and entrepreneurial spirit to pursue what you do.